What's up, Doc? Hi. Hi, Lala. How are you? Good. Can you hear me? Good. Yes, clearly. Happy, happy Sunday. You look fabulous. Thank you. I'm so... <laughs> All the rest over the weekend, you know, and I'm getting ready for Monday. <laughs> yeah, because the clinics are open, right? The, your your, yeah. your practice yeah. is open. Yeah. Well, only for, uh, for the moment for acne and pigmentation for the moment. Right. Um, Yeah, but but we have so many, you know, uh, because of the stress uh, over the two months, a lot of acne breakouts, yeah. and then on top of it, the mask did not help. So not only acne, but also irritation from the mask. We've got some have got dermatite eczema on the face, uh, secondary to the mask. Right. <laughs> so uh, I I'm I think it's um, what's her name? Uh, Lynn is on. And saying hello to you, Dr. Kumati. Yeah. So I've known you, <laughs> I've known you for for many many years. You are a, a great impact in my life because you have helped me through a lot of hormonal changes throughout my life. And you not only be, you're a professional, but I see you as a very good friend who gives me a lot of inputs and and advice as we go along in our journey of friendship. So to start off this show, I would like you to tell um, the audience a little bit about yourself, what you do. Uh, as a career, and then we get to getting to know you a lot better. Okay, so basically, I'm a I, I'm a GP, general practitioner, but I have a special interest in derma. So I started off with dermatology. So I studied, I got a diploma in dermatology. I've always been interested in skin diseases, and that's many years ago when I was working in Australia. The, at that time, they they were a lot of sun damaged skin, and I, that's you looking at mm -hmm. about 25 years ago. And then GPs were already treating, uh, you know, aesthetically. So aesthetic medicine started creeping in with uh, doing chemical peels. At that time, only chemical mm -hmm. peels. And then the first fillers were coming, just came in. And he was using uh, collagen from pigs, you know, porcine collagen. Oh. That was the first time. And then, you know, you need to do test patch because some people react because it was not natural. Of course, now fast forward. Nowadays, our fillers are so it's it's uh, hyaluronic acid, and you have no problems right. and all. So, so evolving over the many years, and I got interested more and more, uh, and uh, so you, you know, from from uh, fillers, then Botox came in after that, and mm -hmm. after that, lasers, and you know, then the whole whole work from then treads, and then right. aesthetic medicine is just growing, you know, because people realize that with aesthetic medicine, you can look. Uh, younger and but still look natural. You know, you don't need to go under a knife. If you start aesthetic, doing something for your face, rejuvenating early, you actually can turn the clock back and you look natural. Yeah. Whereas in the old days, it was only plastic surgery available, and mm -hmm. and you don't look yourself after surgery. So, so why, why, what got you interested in aesthetic medicine instead of going for like you know other other kind of medical fields? <laughs> You know, it, it just came along, you know, because of dermatology, right? Because I was in dermatology, treating all the skin diseases. And then, and then I started improving them, you know, the skin from sun damage and all that. And then slowly I realized that there was a demand, you know, there are women um, and men too, you know, who mm -hmm. actually are happy with the way they look. And uh, and it, that's it. How it just and you know it's amazing because I I get to give people. You have no idea how much aesthetic medicine helps a lot of people. Even the Ministry of Health does not really think greatly of mm. us. Lot of doctors thinking that we are just uh, beauticians with MBBS. That's what yeah. Ministry of Health thinks. But they have no idea that a lot of them have uh, the way uh, someone looks or something on their face or the body actually impacts them psychologically. Mm. And uh, and it can impact in such a way that uh, self confidence get eroded. They are not able to be uh, to uh, and that affects them whether it be the relationship with their family, their husbands, even with work. So once you eradicate the problem, whatever that was bothering them, it's amazing the transformation. Also, be it like acne, right? In teenagers, do you know I have kids that come in with so bad acne? They never look at you in the eye when they're talking. Mm -hmm. They're always looking at the ground because they're ashamed of their face. Same mm -hmm. with facial hair. You know, Indian girls with facial hair on basically like, like they got a beard. Same. Yes. They will not look you in the eye. And you know, it is uh, so. You know, the amount of um, satisfaction I get over the many years. You know, I'm so glad that I'm in this field where 
I do I do good because the people that leave my clinic are different after that. They're really confident and and you know, uh, so it's 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 been a, it's I, I I just love my job. Right, but I think also you you brought up a, a very good point. Um, people in general, uh, we are very judgmental. Uh, at the end of the day, nobody asked these people. These people that wants to do and improve themselves didn't ask the other party for permission or money or to hold their hand while they go through all that the, those uh, developments for themselves. And it, 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 you touch on a very good point that self-esteem is self-confidence is what develops a human being, right? How can you go on within yourself and you don't feel confident and every, you're so conscious? Uh, everybody looks down on um, plastic surgery, on aesthetic. But to me is uh, we have a better option now. People have option to improve themselves. Everybody reads, everybody, you know, uh, Google and take classes and whatever. It's okay, pat on the back. But once somebody wants to take better care of themselves or look better, it's being put down. So the, the key that you brought is, you know, they want to they wanna help themselves. They are the one who's dealing with that. So um, the other question I want to ask you is, you are obviously um, a great, uh, what do you call, model for people that are above 40, right? Yep. Role model. <laughs> and you are. So uh, whenever I talk about people and when I show your picture, they go like, oh my God, you know, can't be. So are you comfortable, <laughs> are you comfortable with revealing your age? Uh, if you're, you're not, don't matter, but I know you're over 40. I, I have no problems revealing my age, but every time I reveal, I have to make sure the person is seated and not going to drop off the chair. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I nearly had a lady fall off my uh, my consultation uh, the the bed because she couldn't believe it. She just got up so right. fast up from bed that she nearly fell off the bed. But <laughs> and then she said, <laughs> "So then she said, you must be joking." I said, right. "Why would I joke? You asked me a question." Okay, right. so my age, right? So basically, end of this year, I will turn sixty. So that's it. But Lila, you we all we are about that right we, we we take care of ourselves i i just love taking care looking good so i'm in the right industry right, right. so i know exactly what to do of course i'm blessed with good genes i, I mean right. i would not deny that but then you know i know i started to uh you know improving the way i look about say about 14 years ago where i so i know exactly like sagging I did right. skin tightening. And then, I, of course, as I got older with the menopause, I started yeah. getting pigmentation, melasma, very bad. And then I started right. doing chemical peels because I'm in an industry where my patients have to have confidence if the doctor looks at shit. How are they going to have confidence in the doctor, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, by improving myself, I learned, you know, like, you know, because I am of a skin color, that is difficult mm. to treat, you know. It's not, you know, it's not the fair and it's not the dark. It's the in-between that are actually fraught with problems when you use lasers right. or you do chemical peels and all. So you, you need to know exactly how to treat those sort of skin types. So, you know, so there I learned to manage other patients of my skin type. Give so me there, your views I'm 60. Fantastic. I will never insult you by saying you look good for 60 because for 60 <laughs> years old, they should be looking like you. You know, so I, so this is Thank what you. I'm trying to teach a lot of people, you know, don't say you look good for your age. There are 20, 30 years, years old that look terrible and don't take care of themselves. You have pride in yourself and you take care of yourself. And I applaud you for that. Thank so you. What, do, what do you think? Uh, tell me your thoughts about aging. How do you feel about aging? All right, aging is actually uh, uh, something that's got to do with your mind, right? Basically, it's how you perceive yourself. Now, chronologically, I'm of a certain age, and sometimes I lose track of how old I am because, I, I mean, I live my life, you know? I just I enjoy... Sorry, um, hang on, Dr. Kumati. Love to, so this is such a great subject, and Anna. she's hung. Sorry, I'm back. hang on. I'm back. Hang on, Dr. Kumati. I, I lost you. So please repeat because it's important on that point. Okay. So basically you have to live. I love, I want to live my life. So I do what I like. 
like music. I like uh, I like fashion. I like travel. I like dancing, and I like my red wine. And I, and you know, I, of course, I, I I dress up in the evening. I'm I'm not the doctor looking person. And you know, I as long as I I don't look weird, <laughs> nobody looks, knows my age. <laughs> And then I have the, the I'm slim enough to look okay in those clothes. And I just right. do that, you know. So aging, okay. Now there are okay physical aging. Yes, there are sometimes people looking suddenly. Oh my God! Like they've aged a lot, and it happens in my practice. I've seen it many times where people come and say, and it's always around the time where they're hitting the big uh, thirty or forty or fifty years old birthday, and then they say, Oh, I aged overnight. And mm. okay, then, then they then you want to do something, which is fine. I think uh, so. So like me, you know, I I'm quite vain, and so I just do things so that I I try and look the best. And I always tea, I always tell my patients, you know, in the end of the day, when I lie in the coffin one day, people say, "Well, there it goes Komati, still looking good in the coffin." <laughs> 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 no, but I think you, you. Every time I see you, you look good. You look great in your life, right? But you also are uh, physically fit, uh, not only in your mind. Um, what do you do for for yeah. your your body? Okay, so I, I okay, mind the most important. So I meditate every day. I meditate because I I realize that with all the stress in life, not just work, you know, relationships, you know. I've, with children, with partners, with friends, you know, it's very difficult, you know. And our life in the city is already very stressful. So I, when I met, I've been meditating for many years, and it's really given me some sort of grounding. Then the other mm. is exercise. Of course, as I get older, I mean, people like us should exercise because we get a lot of illnesses. As we get older, you're more likely to have illnesses. So, and also flexibility because I want to be traveling. You know, I don't want to be stiff. And also another thing is, you as a physical fitness trainer should know, a lot of women don't realize, but lower body uh, strength is important. A lot of them trip because their thighs are not strong and they don't lift their legs up and they trip. Then the other mm -hmm. thing is, um, oh, and the diet. You know, so I'm, okay, mm. I'm Sri Lankan Tamil, but South Indian, I mean, South, South Asian. And always, my, both my parents are diabetic. And so well, another thing I stumbled onto is functional medicine. I started studying functional medicine about ten, eight years ago, which is a study of hormones and, and using mm. vitamins and minerals to optimize. You see, a lot of us, as we get older, because of stress, our hormones go kaput. And then uh, we don't eat that well. And also ours, all the vegetables and whatever we have nutritionally are, are not the best. So uh, we are deficient and then we start having a lot of illnesses. So mm -hmm. the main, most important thing I cut out of my diet long time ago was carbs. You know, so I, I, I'm very strict with the amount of sugar. So carbs, it, it's refined sugar very little and carbs less. So that uh, I don't have issues because sugar is our enemy these days you know it's an inflammatory product in our diet and a lot of people don't realize that and carbs is the one that will feed the sugar in your body and so you need to people need to know that i have girls uh young girls polycystic ovarian syndrome all you know huge around the midriff and it's all because of the high carb diet you know and you know so so to so diet the mind and the body. That's the main thing. I, 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 and I So I take supplements and I mm -hmm. do my bioidentical hormones diligently because, and that is also another reason maybe why I still look the way I look, you know, uh, full right. of energy. Right. You saved my life because I was going through a change of, <laughs> of uh, hormones, right? So I was going through pre-menopause and menopause. And nobody wants to talk about this because it's, it's for women, especially uh, with degraded like oh we, we lost our our life and humanity and we can't you know be sexually active and all this and men look at us differently but you proved it wrong and i proved it wrong because with help there's so many things yep. that bio uh, identical can help you with and it's still not being recognized and it's such a shame uh i, I like yes. I, re I remember coming to you with was like sweating like sweating and 
I mean, I can't r- get rid of uh, the bloatness, uh, the yeah. the five kg, even though I don't eat, and just feeling helpless, you know. Uh, and you saved my life. Uh, you gave me a new life. Uh, just not just because I mean, I exercise, I eat right, and you know, my mind is great. But sometimes the body, the hormones plays a part, and Correct. you know. So, so I'm glad that you brought that up because I think a lot of women don't talk about this. So, yeah. Yeah, yes. go ahead. I, I agree, Lila, because I, it's good that you, we, we, we talk it openly. A lot of women will not talk about it. But, you know, uh, the poor lady, unfortunately, because the hormones have gone crazy, she goes crazy. Actually, it's out of control, you know. I used to remember when I was perimenopausing, irritable. I suddenly will start crying out of no, for no reason. Right. I feel that the whole world is, you know, is, do, is doomsday. Everything is is awful, you know. And imagine if my children and my uh, uh, my partner or husband was living with me, they probably think, oh, "God, there comes the mad woman," you know. And this happens right. all the time. But the moment you create, you correct your hormones. Oh my God, it's like the sun <laughs> came out, you know. <laughs> and then it's like, and then, yeah, then you know, sexually, okay, those there's, there's some women can't be sexually active because the, and you know that creates a problem with the the marriage. And uh, and they don't know where to go. And actually, it can be corrected easily. You know, yes. it's not just the men that need. And uh, there are a lot of stuff for men out there. Nobody talks about the women. Bloody right. hell, you know. Right, That's right, right, right. Yeah? But also, uh, also now, what I'm happy about is there is such a thing of men going through some kind of menopause. Yes, they right? do. They do. Yes. And pause. And repose, right? So now, oh, it's okay for us to talk about it. I want women to talk about this because there is help for them. It's normal. It's as like we grow up, we are growing up for the better. You just need a little bit of adjustment. That's it. Exactly. No, it's true. And you know, Lila, every nobody is the same. Some of us, when we because of stress, we uh, we don't handle our menopause well. Then there are yeah. some who are really not stress, stressed out and easy with life. They, their menopause is easy, so they may not need anything. But the ones who have stressful lifestyle, they actually kill their hormones, like bring down their hormones even before they reach menopause. <laughs> when they hit menopause, my God, that's yeah. everything is gone, you know, and you've gone nothing to help you. That's but, the, that's, but but the more we talk about it, the better it is. Because I remember training a, a young lady. She was uh, she was in her thirties or thirties. Yeah, uh, she menopause at the age of twenty eight. Uh, yeah, severe stress. You know, I, mean, I see. Okay, so now we come to this. Con- uh, so you, uh, there are a lot of young women, hopefully watching this. Uh, you know, I'm seeing, so, so okay, the, the good thing about aesthetic medicine is I get to see patients who come in, they say skin will complain. When the body is dysfunctional, the skin will complain. And actually the problem is the body. It's the skin is just a symptom. So then, you know, they have, uh, very, they have got stress. You know, this generation, oh my God, they can't handle stress. No, we came from a different generation where we didn't have much. <laughs> so we can. <laughs> But these people can't, and unfortunately, we have to get them to train themselves to learn. But meanwhile, what they've done is because of stress, they've killed their hormones. So, so one, your, your client who no hormones, the other is they start having irregular menses, then they can't sleep, they start putting on weight, that uh, depression. Depression right. is so rampant out there, and all because they, they, it's the, the, the stress. And then their, their lifestyle. Another thing is a lot mm. of the young ones, they sleep at 2, 3 a.m. not realizing that the crucial time where the body reboots its hormones is from 12 to 12, uh, around that time, 12 to 3 o'clock. So if you mm. miss that period, every day your hormone level is going to keep coming down. Eventually, you start feeling awful. You know, you, you can't wake up because you're, you're dep- you have no energy. So you keep sleeping till late. And yeah, the whole cycle is gone. So I want to also mention that you are a parent of two kids, two children, yep. and you're a single parent and you raise your children and they are adults and very successful. How does it feel uh, for you raising your child, your, your, your children alone and to see, to see them grow and how, how do you feel? I mean, you are, what I like about you is that you are, you are not just a mother, but you are separate. Like you have your career and you also have your life. Yeah. How, how yeah. do you manage to, to, to do that? Because a lot of women especially are unable to get to that point. 
Okay, one thing I learned is um, with my children, they don't like a nagging mom. And okay, <laughs> they had to say, my son especially. So the thing is, I, I only will come in, like tell them off when it's quite bad. I don't like pick on them all the time. And I'm always keep watching and I also give them the freedom because you can't be too, uh, how you say, um, controlling. You can't. You, you shouldn't do that because these kids need to explore. But at the same time, while you're giving them the freedom, you don't, uh, you should keep tab, you know, on yes. what they're doing and who they're out. So, you know, then, then they have confidence. And I, am, I, I behave like I'm their friend more than a mo mother. Yes, mother, the mother figure will come when she, when she needs to tell them off, but more a friend. Because you know why? Uh, they have issues. But right. my, my daughter with her boyfriends, my son with his, uh, you know, work and uh, studies, from overseas and all that, then I just advise them, you know. And so it's like I tell them like like a friend would so that they will trust me and come to I'd rather they come to me than mm -hmm. ask advice from somebody who is not really the right person. And usually I ask from colleagues, you know, and friends, and they may not be the right. And then the, the scary part is I always tell parents, please have conversations with your children because there are all these suicides right because the kids have never spoken especially boys boys yep. don't know where to go you know they they need to talk and so you if some if your kid has, is quiet and not talking you need to find out well, that is if it's a sudden change in character so yep. but so that's how it's been hard Lila I'm sure you know you have two kids too right yeah it is not easy you know juggling a business and then at the same time uh, making sure the kids are okay and taking care of them. And a lot of the time, you know, I when I come home tired, mm -hmm. even though I'm tired, I have to listen to what if, if they are going through some issue. I have to sit there thinking, oh my god, all I, all I want is peace and quiet. <laughs> but as a mother, right? I mean, I only have these kids until they get married, so I know I have to do what is right. So fortunately, they they. They've come out okay, and um, yeah. and the divorce was quite bad, you know, and yeah. it did affect. You know, anyone who goes through a divorce will know that the poor children, they yeah. do suffer. They are yeah, do. yeah. But uh, it's it's great that you say. You know, um, I think you raise them as a a, um, a guardian, uh, a leader of the house, and then they are an age where you can have a friendly conversation, a, a friendship based conversation. Uh, that's what's happening with my own children also. Now we have, we, we talk for two hours, you know, sometimes we fight and then we, we okay, you know, but then <laughs> it's glad, at the end of the day, when we see what we have raised them with the moral values intact, it comes in conversation. We go like, oh my God, you know, I feel so good that my children are born with empathy, compassion. And that's what the world needs at the moment, uh, teaching yes. our children empathy and, and compassion. So. Correct. Uh, I want to ask you, what is your biggest challenge uh, for the, to keep your mind fit? Uh, I think, you know, for me, the, the work... Okay, so sometimes I have patients who uh, expect uh, the most ridiculous things out of me. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's true. You know, it's, sometimes it's very disappointing when you know, I, I've done a, such a great job and I'm admiring my handiwork. You know, yeah. because aesthetic medicine is basically art. You know, it's really like painting. You know, you create uh, or a sculpt sculpture, and you created something like amazing. And then I'm admiring. And then this patient says that she doesn't see any improvement. She doesn't see anything. <laughs> then you want, you know, early days I used to get upset. Right. Then I learned that you know what not to take it personally, you know, everyone, you know, has got their own way of looking at things and, and I have to, so, so I've learned and the meditation did help to calm me down right. and then I learned to explain. So I'm not very patient. I try to see the other side as to how they breathe and you know, why, why is it like that? Okay. So that's patient, right? Then on the uh, relationships, right? All the <laughs> <laughs> you can get Lila, you get us started on men. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, you know. So so, but they brought out. See, they, the early days, someone said that if you have a problem, the problem is also you. 
you need to find out why is there a problem. You know, it's probably because of the way you react, the way you put up things. So you need to. So that's how I then started looking at myself, and I realized after a while what was my problem, and then I tweaked it. So as you tweak, then you come out a better person. You know, you can't blame all the men and say everyone is an idiot, and I am. I got no problem. Yes. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's actually in the end of the day, it's us. It on the finger points back to you. If you correct yourself, you have to find out what it is, and 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 these various not so great relationships, even with children or with. Patient, staff, whoever, really will tell you what is the problem with you, and then mm-hmm. you address it. And when you address it, problems start disappearing. Then you don't get any more problems. That's very wise. That's very true. You, you see, like like um, a lot, a lot of uh, analogy, self analogy is come to place, and very few people are embracing that. And you and I are very lucky. Like I'm still learning about myself, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm very outspoken. So people have always told me that, oh, you know, uh, mostly coming from men. Men, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You sound so angry. I said, no, I'm passionate. I'm like, <laughs> I said, only men call me angry. Women go like, oh my God, you know, you outspoken, bravo. And I said, how come men always? So I'm not the, you know, the do- docile t- uh, type, but I also have to... Uh, do self analogy just like you, and such an incredible journey because I've known you more than uh, 10 years, well, ten years, ten years, or so. yes, exactly. Yeah, a long and I, time. Yeah, and then I see you know that the, the your your journey, how you speak, and how you deal with stuff, and it's incredible um, transform transformation or learning process, right? Um, yeah, but you see, the thing is, we we uh, we agree to address this issue. A lot of my some of my patients I've seen who have marital problems. They will not want to say that it's their problem. Also, it's yeah. all their husband or partner's problem, and you know you'll never you you'll never get out of this. And you know, blaming every the whole world for their misery, <laughs> sometimes perceived misery. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know. So then the other thing, I okay. So that's why I tell you this: the journey in spirit. So with the divorce, that pushed me into the the world of spirituality. And I know it's, it's amazing, and you know, like you, I am. I'm still learning. You know, I'm still yeah. learning about people, relationship, uh, and about the world. What are we, why are we here? You know, yes. a lot of people never ask that question. Why are we here? You know, we're here to to give something back to the world, not take. Most people here is like, give me, give me. Is everything is mine, and you know, they keep on taking and never giving back. You know, of course, in the end, you become unhappy. You know, so. So that's, I think, another the other thing I'm learning slowly. So I know that you had uh, you had a very hard uh, divorce, and you know, raising kids, anyways, is uh, trying to work. You know, raising kids, uh, and your spirituality start setting in. At what point? At what age do you think that that starts coming in? What, what okay, happened? the the spirituality came in because the divorce was so bad. It was early days of the divorce. Uh, I was depressed, never ending, caught uh, bloody divorce lawyers. Don't ever go there, right? They, um, <laughs> I they know. Are, I, I tell you, basically, all they want is money, 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 and it takes years before the even the the case went to court and all that. So, and then I, I just started my practice. There was not much money in the practice. Mm. And so basically I'm paying the bills, everything from divorce bills to household bills to uh, clinic bills, you know, working so hard to try and make ends meet. In the end, then, you know, it just, you can only manage so much. So that's when somebody introduced me to a medita- course of meditation and that was a turning point. So from the course of meditation, I started meditating and it's so weird because after I started meditating, I started reading more books on spirit, like Tibetan Buddh- uh, Buddhism and the, you know, and all the messages and that. And then I befriended a Tibetan monk who actually, you know, they, they, they are simple people. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we live in a city and we've got a very convoluted uh, um, thoughts about things, but they are very simple. You have a problem, this is a solution. Very simple, you know. And so it's nice, refreshing 
when you come up with a problem, they tell you these are things. And you know, one thing about Buddhism is so easy, so simple. So that, so so I took a lot of things uh, from all these books on spirituality, and then and then started studying myself, and then watching my relationship, how I react to people, and and all that. And then it's taken years. It's taken years, but. So that's why I I I I'm, I still meditate, you know. And I, I tell my patients who are going through problems, please meditate because medi without meditation, you, it's very difficult to calm the mind. The mind goes crazy, you know. So yeah, that's that's why it's because of hardship that brought me into the world of spirituality. Okay, so. Like I know that you you exercise, you um, meditate. And at the end of the day, when now the kids are no, your, your kids are not living with you or they are? Oh, here. they are. My daughter, she's a, a young lawyer. So right. she's here in Singapore. I met uh, her. She's but... gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yours, both yours too. So we had to keep an eye oh. on them. Yeah. No, thank and you. Then, yeah. And my son, he's in the US, but he's here with the COVID, because of the COVID. So he's got one more year of engineering. Okay. And then I think he, he, he'll he stay in the States, most likely. So I've just got this one girl, but then, you know, you know I don't know how long she'll be around too. And right. uh, yeah, so so now the house is full. Yeah, <laughs> the so, the house, so the house is full. So how do you come back like from, from the, the difficult uh, customers, clients, you know, with your own tiredness and juggling? And what do you do when you come home first? Like uh, an ideal look. Uh, yeah, okay, so basically, uh, when I come back, I just have a cup of tea, read a bit, unless, unless someone wants to talk to me, and that's the time they will come and talk, right? I just listen, and then, you know, I, and um, then after all, sorting all everyone's problems, then the end of the day, the evening, <laughs> guess what? I pour myself a glass of red wine. Red wine. <laughs> <laughs> that's my me time <laughs> me and the glass of wine and we have a conversation <laughs> yeah. so where do you who do you go to for your for for a listening ear ah good mm, that's a very good question yeah some 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 i have a few friends who i do go to but you know i'm sure lila you and me are the same i the, the ones which are very uh, intimate issues, I have this conversation with God. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just talk to the creator and I just say, you know what, this is the problem. Uh, just, uh, so I, what I do now is I just say, I'm going to leave it at your feet. And, and that's it. I, I'm not going to worry because I know you, what, you always will look after me. So that's how I do deal with it. Well, that's a beautiful way. Um, but, uh, okay, so uh, because you're spiritual, uh, uh, um, you have found spirituality and you also believe in God, there are people that don't believe in God, you know, oh. uh, yeah. So, oh, okay, yeah. then they should have a good friend to talk to. You know, they really should talk. But, okay, finding a good friend or trustworthy friend, that's the trick, isn't it? Yes. Okay, we so stop that. that. You're a very pri private person, then you can afford it, then you should get, find a good counsellor. Yeah. Because basically all you want to do is tell someone. Sometimes just the act of telling someone, and then maybe the person may say something and then get you thinking about it. You know, so the other thing is, uh, that's, that's why I, I always help people meditate, because when you meditate, you start Finding solutions to your own problem. I read books on spirituality, and always they say, when there's a well, when there is a argument, do the three part three part where you are one part, the person is across, and then there's a third party right in the middle. Put yourself in the third party to watch the arguments on on either one, and then you will come to a conclusion whether you were right or the other person was right. You know, so that was one exercise. Sometimes I do to get a clearer mm. picture of the situation. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, but you're right, Lila, people should talk, you know, if they can find someone, even family members. So my children come to me, right, right. Uh, during a crisis, and, and, and I encourage it because uh, they need to get it out. And then I also advise them, and then, and then 
then and then follow up on it. You know, if if I were to strip you of your title uh, as a doctor, um, as a mother, as a daughter, who what what is your definition of you? <laughs> oh wow! Ah, uh, I'm just comfy, you know. Just a, actually a very, quite a simple person, deep down, deep down with very simple wants. Um, that's it, you know. Yeah, you're right. That's what, it. I, yeah. What, what is your value system? Ah, okay. Integrity is very important. You know, I could. Yeah, there's no way I could have been a politician <laughs> because I can't lie. Thank know? God, But, because how? <laughs> Who's gonna help me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, integrity for me is the most important. You know, and just doing the right thing, and you know, um, the, uh, don't do harm. Never harm anyone. We can do good. It will be even better. And and that's it. Actually, basically, yeah. I the most important. Be. I truly believe you because you know sometimes I come in and I go like, oh, you're like, hey, you don't need lah, you don't need this lah, <laughs> okay? Just keep it simple, okay? And you're very factual, and you actually are one of the most sincere. I mean, I, I've I've been very lucky to have met a lot of people in medical that are very ethical, and you are one of them. Uh, you really sincerely want to help people, and you are very empathetic uh, with with especially you know people that are in need of help, especially women. Yeah. You yeah. know, so that yeah, that's great. Uh, you see, because okay, I got into medicine. It's actually a blessing, you know, to be a doctor. Yes, it, it's not. It's a, a, a occupation which which you could do so much, so much of good things. Why would you want to fleece patients and do stupid things? And I was also believe in karma. What goes around comes around. Eh? So I'm, I'm not worried about karma. I just believe that you must do the right thing. Mm. So you know, if the patient doesn't need it, I don't, I don't push it. You know, and uh, but there are times where I've told patients, you know, they want insist and like say filler lip, and lips are really so huge, and I tell them that you know I tell her that uh, listen, I'm here to make money, right? Not why would I say no to your money? Because I care, I don't want you going out and being made taunted, you know, made fun of. So and uh, and you know, Lila, I just you know, we okay, we need money to live in Singapore. Yes. Yes. But there's a limit to how much. If you're going to go and uh, compromise on uh, moral standards, that uh, just to get more money, it will never last. I have seen it many times. Either you your money goes on illnesses or money goes uh, squandered something. It eventually will go because it was not uh, properly earned. You see, so that's True. what I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I rather pre I rather live a simpler life, but I at the end of the day I know that I can I go to bed with a clear conscience of mind and always be sure that I am okay. You know, doing the right thing. Are you always this way? Is it through you? You are uh, your personality, your character is because of your upbringing. What How does this all come about? Okay, so I, um, I yeah, of course, upbringing. My my dad is a really very nice man. Integrity, you know, like, he, and you know, you watch your parents. So I'm I'm blessed that I got very nice parents, and uh, so so my dad so watched the way he handled himself, himself with people too. Right. Never got angry, you know. Even though some mom is not so great. Uh, well, so so the fiery. I have a bit of fiery part, which I think I got from my mom. <laughs> He's uh, so I watched them, but of course he was a very placid man, and I got that that, that placid part, which is not good. You need to be proactive. You know where my mom comes in, you know, like she's like she's like a bit of a gangster, and uh, but you know, Lila, you have to have that to live in this modern world. You can't sit there quietly and you know. So no, I I can't do that. Oh no, it's uh, everyone else's fault. I'm poor me. No, sorry. You have to go and fight your battles also. So it, it always is a balance, you know. So and running the business taught me so much, you know. <laughs> you have to be sometimes firm, and uh, yeah, firmness is the yeah. Then people will will respect you. How long have you been in business? I think about twelve uh, years. 
12 years. My yeah, God. just as the divorce, when the divorce started, I had to go and set up my practice. And uh, because, oh, I could have choice to go and work for Raffles Medical, but uh, they, were, they wanted an aesthetic doctor there. But uh, there was a very nice uh, dentist who had, a, who had set up this swanky practice just above my clinic. Mm-hmm. And he, he said, come one morning to my practice. I just want to show you something. And he showed me the whole practice. And he said, this is, this is what you can achieve. Uh, but if you go work for someone, you, you will never, you, you can't reach this guy. But if you work for yourself, you can fly. Of right. course, initially it's hard, you know, nothing is easy. But so, yes, and I must thank him, you know, because the first two, three years, I think, was so difficult. Like, oh, my God, I'm thinking, what the hell? But right. now, uh, you know, I can do so many, I can help. If I work for someone, there are a lot of things I can't do. Say if a poor person comes in, mm. how can I waive the fee? Because I'm working for someone else. But, you know, that sort of thing, so you, can, you can't manipulate the way you work. But here yeah. I can. I'm the boss. Yeah, but what, what, what's wonderful that you just said, that uh, I'm the boss, I can help somebody that's poor. That's very, I mean, I, I know there are doctors that, that have done that, I, I, the, the handful that I know. But you actually, I mean, I heard not only with me that you've done it, but I've heard through other p- patients of yours that you do the same for people. And, you know, <laughs> you are a, a dying breed. <laughs> you are yeah. a... Oh, so very sad. Yeah, it's so sad to hear that. Yeah, but yeah, my, I don't know what's happened with the doctors. Uh, you know, yeah, I can't say very much for my lot. Uh, but all I can tell doctors out there is that to please, you know, there's a, there's a limit to how much you, um, wealth you need, you know, and why, you know, you have such an amazing job to help yeah. people, you know, and you're just... Yeah, there are not there are some unscrupulous lot there, but you know that's their, 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 their journey, you know. Yeah, it's their and journey. It's their journey. But also, I think um, at the end of the day, Dr. Kumati, uh, the way the way you are, like I said, you know, if you strip everything uh, off you, and your integrity will set you apart from most of them, and that will never go away. So that's the yeah. difference, right? Um, no, if you, if, no. And and then if we are. If we do not know what's bad, how can we know what is good? So they need to be around to show us what we need to, that's to be the opposite, right? right? That's true. That's right. very true. Yeah, but uh, yeah. What is, I, I'm interested to know what was your childhood like? Oh, uh, I think I was uh, a low, quite lonely because, you know, uh, among my siblings, I used to ace and so I used to go to all these schools right and we studying all the time studying but that's i think was me just just on my own and and um yeah so not much of a childhood just basically studying and once in a while be running roaming around we used to live in newton so roaming the whole of newton and walking around cycling and uh yeah uh but that's me to complain because i was so preoccupied with just studying you know from from uh, so from primary school then went to rgs raffles girls so that was right. studying that tamase okay tamase was good because you know from raffles girls secondary school was a really square square school and then i went yeah it's true and then go to tamase in the east coast right wow yeah. gosh people are different <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lah, from Orchard Road to East, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, people were like uh, fun, you know. You have the art lot and all the wow, well, the uh, different types of people. There you you know, because the East had a nice blend: the Babas, the Indians, the Malays. Really good blend of a uh, lot, you know. And I I enjoyed that. Then 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 went to university. Well, I, I went yeah, medicine. Oh God, then another one, another square lot. <laughs> so what I used to do, I used to run off. Uh, I had a, thank God I had a bunch of girlfriends who loved to party. And we would take off to NUS because we were still in, uh, in uh, Uttram Road, SGH Compass. But the rest of NUS had moved to Kent Ridge. So we would go off there. Whenever there's a party, a hop, uh, two of us, uh, me and another girlfriend would go there and pretend that we are the art students or the, <laughs> or the law students. <laughs> they were having the best parties. <laughs> For five years, 
five years. Five years of medicine was was made tolerable by all doing all these things. <laughs> you you just brought something up that I want to ask. So you are a very sexy woman. You are very confident, you know, and you are a doctor. So doctors has always been perceived as you know the upstanding, you know, robot. Yeah. Right? Are you? Uh, have you come across? I mean, I'm sure uh, that you like in your own ear how people judge you uh, by the way you look. Yep. Okay. So, so a uh, few times, you know, when I've been in a taxi or something like that, and then they they see when they come and pick me up, they know there's a doctor, right? And when yeah. they get in, it's a uh, few times they said, "Oh, well, you don't look like a doctor." So then I said. <laughs> I say, what do you think the doctor supposed to look like? And then they say, they say, no, auntie, ah, when bun, or glasses, and I say, no. <laughs> I say, oh, uncle, now it is uh, doctors look different. And then, anyway, I'm, I said, I then I go on to say, I mean, is feel aesthetic medicine, so right. we can look the way we look. But at the right. same time, you know, I, I always think, thank God, I'm in aesthetic medicine. I, I if I was a neurosurgeon, imagine I going in. And you are my patient. And you see, oh my God, is this doctor <laughs> going to operate on me? <laughs> well, I would. I, no, no, I won't. I think that that I think people, uh, women especially, are being judged a lot by the way they look. Yeah. Uh, the better you look, the the more people question whether you're capable. We have never judged men if they're good looking, whether they're capable of doing a so job. True. So yeah? true. So the so the mindset have to change. What about uh, people that you meet? Not just like the taxi drivers. Like you go to events, you go to parties. Do you feel right. that 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 is like a oh my god, look at her, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, uh, when when they they don't know you, I'm a doctor. Then they right. they then the next question, okay, but only with certain people, I said, are you a PhD holder or a medical doctor? I said, only a doctor will call themselves a doctor, right? Why would I call if I have a PhD holder? Why would I say I'm a doctor? You know, so so sometimes you get that, but once they start talking to you, right? I mean, then they realize that okay, she has the looks, but she also has got the brains, right? She's not a well, you may think that I'm bimbo, but I'm not. You know that sort of thing. So it's, it all depends on the, on the person. You know what their outlook on the woman woman is. But these days, people are now real. There are a lot of in aesthetic medicine. There are a lot of amazing looking women. Uh, out there, a lot of uh, female doctors are starting to uh, look better. You know, not like look like an auntie. You know, from people. Right. Uh, they're no, improving. But also, but also your lifestyle, the way you talk, you're very easygoing. You know, you're very open. Not many people people feel threatened because they don't understand it. And what you said is, once these, they start talking to you, then they understand and they have respect for you, which should. Not be judged in the first place, anyways. That's what we do. But, we judge people. But Lila, everyone, everyone, everyone tends to judge. Everyone right. judges uh, someone by their appearance, right? Right. It's it's, it's so common, you know. I, I tell you, there's a, when I was a, a house officer, my first year uh, as a houseman, and there was a professor, a very uh, famous professor. Oh my God, it's a terror! And then one time he called me up to his room to talk to me about the war and, and that day I wore orange shoes. I thought, oh my god, I'm gone, dead. <laughs> I quickly went in, quickly went in, quickly walked so that my feet is under his table so he can't see the orange shoes. <laughs> then, then he suddenly said, all right, doctor, let's go for a walk round. I thought, oh, done, I'm dead. <laughs> As we were walking, he, first thing he saw the orange shoes, he said, doctor, your shoes are orange. And I say, yes, prof. Uh, then I say, uh, before you go anywhere, now listen, prof, there is nowhere, anywhere that it says what a doctor should look like or dress. Okay, look at my dress, it's below the knee. My, 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 my shirt is not, you know, it's not plunging. I think it's decent. Well, the color of the shoe doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, but he's, he was those old school where, you know, basically you, you had to wear medium, uh, not so, not be colorful. Right, right. <laughs> no, but you're right. Everybody judge. But I think that uh, like the, the tip that you give is to like go inside ourselves and relearn and, and stop it. It, it, it. The first instinct is to judge, right? But if we catch it, catch it every time, it becomes second nature. And then we have we become a global citizen of non-judgmental and we won't have all this chaos that's happening now. Any yeah, kind of I, ism, you know, prejudice. What, 
what you said was so true but it, and i think that is the, the most powerful message not to judge people we always yeah. ju- i do i still do and i'm trying to break that habit but it's it's not a good thing you know right. so many times i've made that mistake where i've judged a person wrongly and turned out that it was not the case and i felt so bad about it you know yeah that i'm also in practice every time i go like oh, okay wait wait step back step back step back and i hope Correct. you know in in times to come it becomes second nature you know i always try to put myself in the other person's shoes and then yeah. to learn you know that's it yeah. you know that's a very basic basic learning skill put yourself in that person's shoes then you back off you know you will back off so before we end this is being enlightening for me uh what advice can you give for the audience that's watching about mind body spirit how can they be intact in that department okay so basically just take write down note on a notebook what you want in your what you want in your life in priority and then go go and get it don't wait you know and you know if you're not harming anyone there's no harm going and doing it whatever you want to do you know forget about what society you know a lot of people worried about what this person will say or that person say and then their whole life is screwed up and even in an unhappy relationship please get out <laughs> i agree right lila crazy i have so many patients and girlfriends and relatives all miserable because they're so miserable they eventually get ill yes. they cancer why could have okay it's not easy but after that you be like oh my god i should have done this earlier <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> so i think live your life please live your life do good or oh, every little good that you do is blessing for for you for your family i think that's the message i i want to give that's those are wonderful messages and uh, i really appreciate you and thank you for being part of an incredible journey of mine and i am so happy that i get to see your own journey where i i've seen you grown and you are a great inspiration to me you too lila you're a big inspiration i'm sure a lot of people know about your journey tougher huh? tough too so i uh, it's good that you invited me and we had this candid con- discussion yeah. yes because i think that is important for people to know the person behind the the doctor's jacket you know because yeah. that that is one of the biggest quality that i want to show people not just a doctor that comes and go oh you need this you need that because you're very compassionate you're very empathetic and you are very ethical and that's what i wanted to showcase on this show thank you hey god love you see you soon see you next bye 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 <laughs> bye <laughs>